they answer your calls or reply to your texts it is a matter that is based on the law honorable speaker the preliminary objections we had from the honorable tender amolo and the leader of minority speaks volumes to the issues that i was speaking to here last week that one we sought to impeach a cabinet secretary without duly considering the provisions of Article 152 of our Constitution, and especially so Article 152.7, and our standing orders from Standing Order 64 to 68. Honorable Speaker, you remember me advising the Honorable, uh, the sponsor of the motion, the Honorable Amboka, that if I were him, I would have been patient to allow conclusion, a logical conclusion of the inquiry by the, a committee of this House under the leadership of Honorable Mutunga, the Committee on Agriculture, that I would have been patient to allow investigative agencies to investigate and see if there's culpability on either the Cabinet Secretary or any other public officer before proposing an impeachment motion. Honorable Speaker, this report, as you said, it is good for academics. And it is important that all the 349 members of this house read that report so that they understand that impeaching a cabinet secretary can never be anchored on our feelings our emotions and whether we like somebody or dislike them that we must ensure any time you want to impeach a cabinet secretary or a public official it is based on what is provided for in law was there a particularity in the allegations in that motion? I submitted here, Honorable Speaker, last week that the motion was laden with generalities and newspaper articles and therefore would never have passed the test of time if you subjected it to the provisions of the Constitution, our own standing orders, and indeed precedents that has been set by courts of law. And I pointed out the famous Wambora cases because Governor Ambora, Honorable Speaker, you know, you remember, is one of the public officers that were impeached more than any other public officer. And therefore, I want to urge members, Honorable Speaker, that this becomes a learning, a lesson to learn for us as a House. If we propose motions to impeach cabinet secretaries for the sake of it, we will make this House extremely important. We will become important because we are acting at the whim of the moment, we are not patient to get substantive issues that can truly impeach a cabinet secretary. I look forward to a day, Honorable Speaker, that under the provision of our 2010 Constitution, we will offer meaningful oversight of our cabinet secretaries, that we shall take our work seriously as a House, and we make sure, Honorable Speaker, that if we do an inquiry like we were doing, Honorable Speaker, we base all our deliberations on facts and not emotions, Honorable Speaker. I hope, Honorable Speaker, that this report, when we read, we will be able to internalize the reasons as to why those who say that all the allegations are not substantiated, the reasons and the reasoning behind them. Honorable Speaker, I know there are those who have expressed their minority opinion. And Honorable Speaker, I had a brief look at that report. And it is all based again on emotions and what they want to say are perceptions. Honorable Speaker, the drafters of our constitution, including the Honorable Tiende Amolo who drafted this constitution, should have then considered putting either under our values the question of perceptions our national values, or probably part of the reasons under Article 152.7, as, uh, 152 of our Constitution, as to why you would impeach a cabinet secretary, then you should have included perceptions. But our laws, our Constitution, our standing orders do not offer us an opportunity to impeach a cabinet secretary or any other public officer on the basis of perceptions. You may perceive somebody as dislikable, Honorable Speaker. You may perceive somebody as arrogant or as corrupt, but that is not provided for in the Constitution and in our laws. We are the lawmakers. We are the first people who should be the first defenders. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I was saying, Honorable Speaker, 
we swear by the Bible and the Holy Quran when we take oath of office to defend the constitution and the laws of this republic, honorable speaker. We must always be at the forefront to defend the constitution and the laws of our country, honorable speaker. So that tomorrow, honorable speaker, if the honorable Junet Muhammad gets the opportunity to serve as a cabinet secretary, I will not seek to impeach him on the basis of my perceptions that are not, are not objective at all. That I will seek to impeach the Honorable Junet on the basis of his performance and that which is provided for our, under our constitution. Honorable Speaker, it is easy to speak to the gallery, to speak to the media, Honorable Speaker, because the media are saying this and that. I have seen lawyers saying that members of parliament, if they 11, Somebody tweeted that uh, the 11 members times 5 million shillings is the basis on which this motion will be decided, Honorable Speaker. And it's a very senior council in this country, Honorable Speaker. It is shameful and unfortunate, Honorable Speaker, that a lawyer, an advocate of the High Court, a senior council, would be speaking to issues, Honorable Speaker, that any Kenyan who was watching the deliberations of this committee in the full, under the full glare of the public of the media, honourable speaker, there was nothing that w could be substantiated. The honourable Amboka could not substantiate anything, honourable speaker. And therefore, as I uh, commend the honourable Amboka for his fortitude and temerity, even to be able to push through a motion he knew was dead on arrival, since he could not substantiate, it was based on newspaper cuttings and all the other rumours you hear in town, honourable speaker. At least he had the fortitude to push it on to the end. Honorable Amboka, please next time I would urge you, let us stick to what is provided for by our standing orders, our own laws, and the constitution of the republic. If we do that, Honorable Speaker, this house and indeed parliament will have teeth to bite. Otherwise, if we abuse the provisions of our constitution to just collect signatures and sign signatures and push Honorable Speaker, in an attempt maybe to blackmail or intimidate cabinet secretaries, we shall be rendering this house important, and that will be the end of Parliament, Honorable Speaker. I pray to God and urge members that next time we want to impeach a cabinet secretary, yes, let okay. it be based on the law, order. the constitution. Order, Majority Leader. Yes, Ocheng, what's the point of order? Mr. Speaker, I've been listening here today. What's the point of order? Mr. So Speaker, is it in order for the Majority Leader to keep on referring to the Honorable Wamboka as if he made a mistake to bring this particular motion? Because all through his speech, that was insinuating that it was a mistake for Honorable Wamboka to bring this motion, Mr. Speaker. Uh, is it in order that he does that? First, I didn't understand it that way. And secondly, Honorable Wamboka made no mistake in exercising his right. Yes. And that's what Ichungwa said. All he said is that uh, exercise much more care and bring more tangible evidence. That's what I heard him say. Yes. Order, honorable members. I promised five. Five. It is done. I'll now call the next order. The matter is over. Call the next order. Your motion was spent. You moved, you replied. Yes. Next order. Order number 12, Committee of the Whole House. Order, honorable members, be upstanding. Honorable members.
Order members, order. This is the committee of the whole house to consider the National Disaster Risk Management Bill, Bill number 24 of 2023. Honorable members, order. Those who are receding to recede in order, those who are remaining to take their seat that you can proceed with the committee of the whole house. Clause 3. I propose that clause I propose that clause 3, clause 3, be part of the bill. I've, I've hardly read a clause, Honorable Mili. So is it, is it on clause 3? Go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I have several amendments uh, to the bill. Could I please be assisted by being given a uh, physical order paper? Because I'm not able to follow. I wouldn't even know whether I have an amendment. Of course, of course. You'll get it immediately. Thank you. Let's get on Mili the physical order paper. Where are the surgeons? Surgeon at arms, come pick, get, get the honorable Mili the order paper. I remember there's no amendment to that clause, so I now put the question that clause 3 be part of the bill. As many of that opinion say aye, as many of that opinion say nay, the ayes have it. Clause 4. I remember I propose the question that clause 4 be part of the bill. You have an amendment by the Honorable, Honorable Mili. Chair, I'm see. still trying to get the... No, go ahead. You consult with Honorable Majitu Lira before you can... I'll give you a minute or two. What page is it at? On page 630, 631. Is it chair? Is it 632, up there. 632, up there. Just a moment. Oh, thank you, Chair. Chair, I move that clause 4 be amended as per the order paper. Chair, what this um, amendment seeks to do is to ensure the protection of vulnerable groups, including women, children, persons with disabilities, and older persons of the society when you are having a national disaster. And, Mr. Uh, and Chair, you can actually see uh, it is even good that this bill is coming at a time when we are dealing with the floods. And you can see the women, children, and persons with disabilities are really suffering uh, because of the, the flooding. So special attention should be given to them during this time, I propose. Members, I propose a question that clause 4 be amended as proposed by the Honorable Mili. Honorable Chair, you got something to say on this? I, I have a mic on a chair. I support. I want to hear the chairman on this. 